Onograph is a compositing software that uses the concept of a layer stack to merge multiple graphic sources into a single image. The documentation explains the basis of this layer stack based on the concept of layers. It draws an analogy between the layers that you stack on top of each other and the different layers of a hamburger. Once the stacking is done, you can place a camera above the stack of elements. The camera is directed downwards to produce an image. You can import several graphic elements and then stack them on top of each other in the same way you would stack different layers of a hamburger. You can compare the bottom bun of this hamburger to the layer at the bottom of the stack. Autograph provides a side view of this layer stack. Once you've stacked these layers, you can take a top-down photo of them and display the result in the viewer. Let's review these concepts within Autograph to see how it's done. The project panel is where you can import the graphic elements that'll be stacked in the layer stack. This stacking takes place in the left part of the timeline called the layer stack. And the result of this stacking is visible in the viewer. To get started, you'll need to import some graphic elements into the project panel. And there are several ways to do that. You can start by clicking on Import Files. You can import various types of elements, like 3D objects or tables, but for now, we'll focus on importing 2D graphic elements. By clicking on the first option, you'll see Autographs File Explorer. This explorer has several sub-windows. You can use the upper left part to navigate through the different storage units on your computer. You can use your keyboard to type the name of a folder directly, like I did here for tutorials underscore beginners. This way, you can navigate to the assets subfolder. You can select one or more graphic elements to import by using the control or command key. Here you can select this background and basketball and click on the open button. Now these two graphic elements are in the project panel. By going to the file, recent files menu, specifically the video image section, you can see that these two elements are now referenced. If you go back to the file browser, you'll also see that these two files are listed at the bottom left. You can create bookmarks to quickly access this folder, which we're going to be coming back to a lot during these tutorials. The Assets folder is now referenced on this list to the left. By pressing the Enter key or the F2 key of your keyboard, you can rename the bookmark. You can use this upwards facing arrow key to go back a level in your folder hierarchy. By clicking on the bookmark, you can quickly get back to the assets folder. Autograph has several tools for navigating folders. We've already mentioned the arrow pointing upwards, which allows you to go back one level in your folders. The two arrows on the left, forward and backward, allow you to move through your navigation history. This history is also accessible through a button that lists all of the folders you've entered since opening this browser. We'll go over the various advanced options of the file browser a bit later, but for now we'll go back to the project panel. As mentioned before, there's another way to import elements into the project panel and this can be done through your operating system's file browser. Let's select the lights and net elements and drag them directly in the project panel. By default, these elements are displayed in the project panel in tree mode. This mode provides a lot of information about these graphic elements. For example, you can see that the net.mov animation is a QuickTime file using the ProRes codec. You'll also notice that the quantization of this video was done with 12 bits per channel, 
We'll come back to these more technical concepts later. Animations also display their duration and initial time code. Autograph offers another way to view your graphic elements more quickly. By clicking on the button representing tree view, you can switch to grid view. Once you switch to this mode, there is an arrow on the right that provides access to several options, like adjusting the size of the thumbnails, which you can make larger or smaller as needed. You can sort these elements according to several criteria, like by name or type, in ascending or descending order. For now, we'll just keep them sorted by name. If you hover your mouse over the thumbnails, a vertical black bar appears that moves across the width of the thumbnail from left to right. Right now, hovering the cursor doesn't have an effect because the images we imported are static PNG images. But when you hover over the net.mov file, which is an animation, you can quickly navigate through its content to preview it. Now you know the various ways of importing graphic elements into the project panel, and we can focus on how to visualize them and more importantly, how to combine them into a single composite image. In this video, we went over different ways of importing elements into the project panel, how to navigate the file browser, and use the tree and grid modes.